Hey folks, do you know that a recent study found out that a popular high cholesterol drug may become handy as a treatment against COVID-19? Let's dive in. We are Animated Papers. This is based on this paper by Scott P. Davids et al. The primary receptor for SARS-CoV-2 virus is S2 through which the virus get attached and infect. In this research, they have focused on the already established drugs that can influence the dimerization of S2 and destabilize the receptor binding domain of the viral spike protein. The virus can enter to human cells by binding its receptor binding domain of the viral spike protein to S2 on the human cell membrane. Drugs that can block this binding may considerably reduce viral uptake. Structural studies of S2 have shown that can dimerize. This dimerization of S2 may sterically hinder the protomers from binding to the viral spike protein receptor binding domains. Using this information, they have hypothesized that drugs that alter dimerization of S2 might affect viral infection by endocytosis. Therefore, to test this hypothesis, they have developed an assay to measure dimerization of S2. Let's see how they have done it. Here they have designed a nanobit protein interaction system. It is based on a modified luciferase named Nanoluc, which has been split into two catalytically incomplete components, Lg bit and Sm bit. When they bind together, it will form an active luciferase which can generate luminescence. In this experiment, S2 molecules were tagged with either Lg bit or Sm bit with the nanobit reporter. So, when S2 molecules are dimerized, Lg bit and Sm bit 2 will bind together and form active luciferase and generate luminescence. The higher the dimerization, the higher the luminescence signal will be. In these results, as you can see, it's with phenofibric acid the most luminescence signals are given in this experiment. Phenofibric acid has also destabilized the viral spike protein receptor binding domain as investigation shown. Furthermore, Drugs have been evaluated using different viral infection assays. In these cases, phenofibrate and phenofibric acid were found to significantly reduce infection rates. This was further confirmed by PCR tests, which have shown a considerable reduction of viral mRNA with these drugs. The good thing is, mutations in the viral genome that have produced alpha and delta variants are less likely to affect the antiviral activity of this drug which target human S2 proteins rather than viral proteins. Excitingly, phenofibrate and phenofibric acid has been also shown to suppress ARV inflammation, cytokine release, and to prevent hypercoagulability seen in the late stage of the disease. Final conclusion is, phenofibrate and phenofibric acid drugs would reduce disease severity and the spread of infection to others. Let's hope that a clinical trial will continue. That's all for today.